Welcome to our end of the school year edition of Tosa West News. I'm Mitch Stingle. And I'm Erin Stapleton. We have a great show for you today with our lineup consisting of a look into West's American Public Policy Issue Fair, the scoop on an interdepartmental emergency preparedness exercise for the district, and an update with the latest on sports. And what an awesome summer this will be if the weather keeps up like this. I agree. I can't wait to get to the beach. Well, this past Tuesday, May 22nd, APP students took the time to come out of that beautiful sunshine to present one side of a controversial issue. Each backed up with their work with information taken from over a semester, some even a year of research. On Tuesday night, May 22nd, the Wauwatosa community gathered at Wauwatosa West for this year's issue fair. Not only did people get info about many pressing issues, but the APP students gave presentations about these issues for their final projects and were judged by local community members. The judge talks to me and says, oh, hi, how are you? And then I present my board to them. And then they rate me depending on how good I know my subject or how long I presented for. You only get 10 minutes with a student. You have to judge their board, their presentation board, their trifold board, and then they explain the problem, the alternative solutions, the policy, and their solution. And then we get an opportunity to ask questions, and then there's a judging sheet. Many were pleased with the positive message the fair engendered. I think it's like a pretty good experience because you're um, sharing your ideas and political ideas with parents and students. It's a good way to interact with community members and get different perspectives on what professionals in the field think. Uh, I think it's a good idea. I, I don't know if all of us are ready for quite this big of a issue fair. I mean, it's kind of overwhelming right now, but. I think it's a good idea. Um, I think it's a good idea. I know a lot of people think that it's like really stressful and kind of like nerve wracking, which it is. But once you get going, like a lot of the judges, or I mean, all the judges are like really nice. I think the, the night is going really smoothly tonight. But what stands out to me the most is the knowledge that the students have about this issue and about their issue. And creating the issue fair was anything but simple. Students spent a lot of time preparing for this event. This is the second year that we've had the issue fair and uh, the kids have been putting in a ton of time uh, since the beginning of uh, second semester. I prepared myself by researching a lot and uh, I just knew a lot about it already so I kind of used my previous knowledge along with the stuff I researched with and I just practiced it a few times. We had to create these posters and create the essay that we had to do and so what was really interesting is it took a lot of time and a lot of time in the computer labs and everything to research the information, find out from different companies and different organizations what I really needed to know. So it'd be, it's really, it was really a long haul for it, but it's definitely worth it in the end. Everything really came together good, and I'm really glad of the outcome. So Afterwards, teachers, judges, and students had a lot of good advice for future students doing this project. The main thing in judging is, you know, know your topic, just be relaxed, and talk the judge through and talk people through about what you feel like the best solution is. Do not procrastinate. Seriously, it's, when I had to procrastinate because I left it off, it was one of the hardest projects I've ever done. You have to know your stuff so well. Just practice it and make sure that, you know, you put effort into what you're doing. One of the things is, uh, Finding a topic that is hands-on, something that uh, they're invested in. Definitely pick a topic that you're interested in and make sure you know all the information um, and kind of put more work into it than you think you need. You know, interview someone, send out a survey, put it all on your board and make sure you talk about everything that you did. Overall, the issue fair was a huge success. Thank you and uh, have a good night. Uh, live long and prosper. It's great to see students civically involved in their school and community, and on such a wide range of topics. Yes, it really is, and some students have been involved civically in another venue recently as well. Yeah, that's right. Several West and a few Whitman students were just involved in the play acting of a crisis situation to help better the reactiveness and effectiveness of the people and the police department 
fire department, and school district. On Saturday, May 19th, an event with over 100 people took place. No, we're not talking about prom. We're talking about the police force, fire department, and school district administration's situation preparedness exercise that took place at Whitman Middle School that same morning. With 23 participants from the school district, 7 media students, 60 police men and women, and 40 firemen and women, this was an extremely extensive project and not the only that's been performed. This past year, the fire chief was involved in another similar project in Chicago. This is pretty good sized. I've done with one with as many as 600 participants and it involved a hazmat team. It involved the uh, contingent from the Army for Kimbio and a headquarters for a major corporation. In Wauwatosa's exercise, several of the students involved play acted as hostages in the pretend crisis. Well, my experience as a Whitman hostage, wow, um, it was very interesting, it definitely wasn't what I expected, I expected going into it, it was probably going to be like, wow, this is so lame, like we're not going to do anything, but um, my experience is kind of funny, so I was a 13 year old girl, <laughs> and I, um, I was shot in the chest, that was my victim, and I also had uncontrollable bleeding in my arm, that I don't know where that came from, but um, so I uh, was laying on the floor, I wasn't able to walk, and the uh, SWAT team came in and they actually physically carried me out of the building, which was really funny because uh, Maggie was trailing behind me trying to keep up. <laughs> and um, so that was, it was a really neat experience knowing that like, it's actually like a, a actual scenario of how they have it. So that was really cool. It was kind of scary, but it was a lot of fun. Well, it was kind of like what I expected it to be. I, I thought it was really fun, it was cool. I got to go in the, they got to put us in a SWAT car, and and then when we, we sat inside of the dark rooms, like we were hiding from, like actually in a lockdown situation, hiding from a bad person walking through the hallways. But I don't know, I think I would definitely participate in one again if I had the opportunity. It was pretty cool. And I thought they made it, they did a good job of making it seem realistic too. So. A few West students were recruited from the theater crowd to try their talents in another very different venue. It was very scary because I was the only person who was to die in the entire experiment. I was shot in the chest and the leg, uncontrollable bleeding, so uh, I died. It was terrifying and I wouldn't compare it to theater because that wasn't acting. Um, that was like legitimate terror because he was screaming my name down the hallway. The difference between acting in Hostage Day and acting on the stage was that it was a lot more real. I was laying in the room and the cops came in yeah. and they asked if anyone was hurt and they were like, this guy got shot twice. And then they ran over, jumped over me, picked me up and ran me outside through the hallway. And then they threw me inside the back of this truck thing, drove me away, got the ambulance people to come in and then they were like, put on this little wristband that said I was dead. I didn't really know what to expect, so I just went in and um, I got a part where I was supposed to be a 13-year-old girl who uh, ran into a bubbler actually because I have ADHD and I had like a cut on my arm and I was bleeding. Um, and then Hannah was my friend and she was unconscious and so I had to kind of take care of her and like it was cool though because we got taken out in like a slot car and it was super realistic. And they took everything super seriously, there was never really like a dull moment. So they were always like super into it and it's not like they were just messing around even though they knew nobody was hurt. So it was like really awesome and it was good to see that people outside of theater are good at acting too. It's something that you're not really prepared for it because they tell you what's going to happen but then when it actually does happen it's really scary. So the fact that it's real life made it a lot different than when you're up on stage. It was definitely a good experience for anyone who's in theater to try to like make it seem as realistic as possible for these people. Even broadcast and newspaper students were brought on board to help simulate press releases. We have a lot of additional information, uh, much of it is the same. Uh, we can report uh, that there were gunshots at Whitman Middle School. Um, so how many victims total were there? Hang on one second. Uh, how many victims did we have? Um, we had a total of 18 injured that were transported. But why do these exercises in the first place? How are they important? Basically so we could see if what we have prepared on paper would work in a real crisis situation and to see what we needed to work on and improve yet. Uh, the nice thing with this is we got multiple agencies working together. 
because even though the police are very good in Tosa and the fire is very good, we don't have a lot of opportunities to work to together at this level. And in this instance, we've got Milwaukee Fire Department providing their command post. We're working with the schools. This is really what they call unified command. So how prepared is the school district for such a traumatic experience? According to those involved, the training exercise has demonstrated the department's abilities nicely. One of the big things that I think we learned was that we need to have better communication between the school and the police and the fire department. Um, things like radios, phones, um, other wireless devices that we can improve, that we can communicate better and uh, more efficiently in a crisis situation that would help us uh, respond to injured people quicker and get them treated faster, which is one of our main goals. Well, a congratulations to our own Officer Brown for orchestrating the procedure. At the conclusion, you can identify things that went well, things that didn't go well, and then try to remember as much of the experience as you possibly can. And hopefully you never have to use it. That seems like a great opportunity for both students and officers to get involved. And what an accomplishment for our own school resource officer, Officer Brown. Next, we have the latest. Girls soccer has really excelled this year. With 12 wins, 5 losses, and 3 ties, they really pulled it together and finished strong. Player Aaron Bilstrom summed it up. We did a really well, and we had a strong year. Way to go, girls. Your team spirit and of determination paid off. Girls softball has had an amazing season so far, with 10 wins as of May 23rd, breaking the school's all-time record. The celebratory game that won them their glory was against Brown Deer, with Ashley Lindstrom carrying a no-hitter into the 6th inning and a 13-7 final score. The Trojans absolutely killed. Congrats again, ladies. In a dominating performance at the Woodland Conference Outdoor Championship on May 23rd, the girls track team raced into second place after a superb collection of individuals and team effort. Among the many tremendous showings by the girls were standout performances by Bridget Jensen in winning the 800, Elise Stitchite in taking second in the 400 meter, Colleen Seafelt in her regional winning race for the 300 lows, in addition to the excellent performances by the runners, both the discus and shot putters helped vault the team into its high placing with efforts from Alexandra Hafmeister in winning discus and Zaina Lok, Alexis Hardy and Beth Goncars in their shot put performances, which placed them in sectionals. Relay runners Ellie McGillis, Jenny Fisher, Tessa Mullaney, and Casey Gabro also put in excellent performances to help the Trojans. As the girls' team approaches their road to the States, we wish them the best of luck. The boys' varsity baseball team has kicked off with a great start. On May 23rd, the team won their home opener against Grafton, 8-4. The team was able to overcome some roadblocks and took the lead for good in the fifth inning sparked by senior Tyler Gross's three-run triple. The boys' varsity tennis team entered their match on May 23rd with hopes of advancing to sectionals. In a collective team effort, the Trojans swept West Dallas. 6-0 at the Wauwatosa West subsectional, Alex Chu and Dan Angle also qualified for sectionals at Brookfield Central on May 25th. Make sure to send the entire boys varsity tennis team the best of luck on the remainder of their season. Boys track just keeps getting better. The guys recently won the Woodland Conference Outdoor Championships and took second at their regional meet. Junior Patrick Campbell comments, for the low number of two track participants we have, we are really good and have improved since last year. We have worked very hard. And yes, they have. Keep it up, boys, at the state meet June 1st and 2nd. Well, that's it for the latest. It's wonderful to see all the good things happening at our very own Tosa West. It really has. Seeing the success of our sports teams, inspirational art in Gallery 114, and other really cool things done by fellow Trojans has really instilled in me some Trojan pride. Me too. We have a lot, to be, a lot of positive things to be proud of here. It's definitely been a stellar year. Now, here's to a stellar summer. Remember the sunscreen and enjoy the sun. Bye for now, Trojans. See you next year.